All right, Shalom, Kahalayim La, Yahweh Bashim, Shah Bashim, Kakadash, the bonus to the Apostle and the Elders of Great Millstone, really teach well. Um, this is going to be a continuation of my previous lesson because for some reason, I don't get it. I don't understand why that does it. But when I'm on the phone recording, screen recording, and I put my phone on Do Not Disturb, it stills, it, it stops me from recording. I don't know why it does that. I can't make sense of that. But um, I'm going to just continue in the spirit. Of, of this lesson um concerning the modest apparel it says i don't know why it does that i don't i i put my phone on do not disturb for a fucking reason and it still stops me from recording but um anyways i'm gonna continue in the spirit it says like i was saying man you know i'm gonna read this again it says a mode of dress and behavior which intends to avoid the encouraging of sexual attraction in others so when a woman is dressing um with you know apparel that's enticing for sexual activity man that's what you're basically you're you're telling everybody you're telling the world oh, look i want sexual attention but then you want somebody to respect you at the same time when you don't even respect yourself enough to wear clothing that's a, that's appropriate one of the many things that's wrong with babylon the great man this is a, a key thing on why there's so much adultery that goes on in this society and it's spearheaded by Esau. He doesn't do anything about it. He can fix it. Uh, where's this generation? Adulterous generation. Um, let's see. Answers uh, evil and adultery are seeking out the sign, but there's no uh, it's like, yeah. This is Mark 8 and 38. It says, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in the in this adulterous and sinful generation of him. Also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the, with the holy angels. So, as you can see, Yahweh Shai even labeled, you know, we're living in that same, that uh, this adulterous and sinful generation, man. You know, and Yahweh Shai is going to come in this day and time, very soon, and put an end to all of this shit. So there's so much adultery that goes on, the spiritual adultery, which is um worshiping other, other gods and other idols. There's so much adultery that goes on in this generation, in this world. And the Esau is the main person that's pushing that shit. You know, like I went back, you know, in my first lesson before it got interrupted. Um, I went in the fact that America allowed women to wear pants. You know? So, as you can see, America was already on its way down. And now, it's to the point that everything is about to be legal, man. Everything that's against the, uh, against the law and statute commandments of the Bible, oh, eventually will be illegal, man. You know? Will, will be legal, I'm sorry. You can do whatever the hell you want to do in America. You know, you could be a witch. You could be an adulterer. You could be a so-called porn star. You can be a prostitute. You could, Man, this place is through. This is the book of Habakkuk 1 and 1. It says, the burden which Habakkuk, the prophet, did see. I'm still going to get Deuteronomy 22 and 5. It says, oh, Yahweh, how long shall I cry and I will not hear? Right, which the, the, the true prophets and the men of the Lord are crying unto the Lord. It says, even cry out unto the, thee of violence and, and thou will not save because ultimately the nation of Israel needs to be delivered. Like it says in uh, the book of um, uh, uh, Ezekiel 9, set a mark on the foreheads of the men that wet that sigh and cry for all the abominations adultery is an abomination women wearing pants is an abomination homosexuality is an abomination all of the things that this society condones and allow you to do witchcraft is abomination you know all of these things that are allowed and pushed in this society are against the heavenly father it says that's why we need salvation and this place is going to be destroyed it says, why, why does, why does thou shew me iniquity? Iniquity is sin upon sin, and cause me to behold grievance. So everywhere 
Every single day we're we're seeing iniquity. Every single day we behold, and that means we're looking at grievance, things that grieve us, especially on the internet, man. That's why you know, like the brother's been saying, um, it's a good thing to detox from, you know, social media when it comes to uh, Facebook, Instagram, and you know, even TikTok. You know, all of these things just just it's it's not a little th good thing to be on that shit all day, you know. Like this brother's been saying, it's it's not good for you to have the, all that bullshit, you know, that's on the internet inside your spirit. <laughs> Basically, do a, a social media detox, you know. <laughs> Lock you. But um, it says, why do we, that, why does thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? And it's also teaching us that we what we need the Lord, man. We, this ain't it. We're sick of this place. It's grieving us for a good reason. So we will, well, we will appreciate righteousness and show that we need righteousness, man. You know, we can't live in a world like this. And that's what this is teaching us. It says, for spoiling and violence are before, are before me. That means we see it every day. We're living in uh, violent cities, violent neighborhoods, low-income neighborhoods. So we're always we're subject to these these things vanity vanity we're subject to break-ins uh, robberies and things like that you know that's why you have to have a so-called security system you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna need that shit in our kingdom man you know um that's why the scripture says store up treasures in heaven where thieves don't break in and steal because you got to worry about that in this society you got nice possessions or whatever these these hungry little gremlins out here. That's greedy for gain. They're going to run up in your house and take everything you got. But um, it says, for spoiling and violence are before me. And there are and there are that rise, raise up strife and contention. Yeah, this is a very strifeful and contentious place because nobody's at peace. Nobody can be at peace, man. Because everybody's fucking vexed. Everybody is vexed, man. Everybody's uncomfortable, you know. Everybody's uh, in a poor, or low state of mind, so that causes people to be. Uh, oh, come on, what? Was, that causes people to be in that type of state of mind where they're always constantly aggressive. You know, nobody's actually at peace. Everybody's on edge. Everybody's aggressive. You know, it says verse four. The point it says, therefore, the law is slacked, and judgment does never go forth for the the wicked doth compass about the righteous therefore wrong judgment proceeded so who's in power Esau Edom and he's the wicked of that the scripture speaks of the Bible speaks of so therefore wrong judgment goes forth there's no righteous go if there was righteous judgment going forth there wouldn't be no women out here wearing pants there wouldn't be no men out here uh, selling drugs and you know doing all the things that they do on um, wickedness that they do it wouldn't be none of that going on. But this is not a righteous society. And it's only going to get worse. It's going to get worse before it gets better. And the better is going to come when your house child appears, man. This is a book of uh, Proverbs 29 and 2. It says, when the, rich, the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. So do, do it look like the people are rejoicing? No. Because the righteous are not in authority. But once your house child takes over, eventually Israel is going to rejoice. But uh, not not I can't say too much for you other heathens, man. You know, <laughs> you're going to go, you're going right into slavery. So you have nothing to rejoice about. But ultimately, you know, you heathens, you're going to like the fact that Israel is ruling because you ain't going to have no other fucking choice, you know. <laughs> and plus, the world is going to be a better place with Israel on top anyways. Even though you're going to be under us, you're going to be subject to us. You're going to be our slaves. You're going to be giving us your uh, your goods and things of that nature. And you're going to be serving us. The world is still going to be a better place, you know. Um, it says, the, but when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn, and our people are the ones that's mourning the most. Jacob, Israel, the 12 tribes, we are the ones that's mourning the most. These other heathen nations, they have their piece of their pie, but at the same time, they're still, uh, they're still not on Esau's level, but um, they're still mourning too, because they, they can't get no peace from Esau, man. Esau's fucking everybody over. That's why you see the nations rising up against his ass. You know? Um, 
This is Proverbs chapter 29. I believe it's verse 16. Yes, yeah, it's verse 16. It says, when the wicked are multiplied, that means when they increase in numbers, transgression increases. Which is What is transgression? Let's look that word up. Transgression. Transgression means particularly that related to uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. It says a transgression of the law. What law? The law, statute, of commandments of the Bible. It says a going over or a going across to step across, step over, climb over, pass, go beyond. Go beyond what, what is allowed, what is natural. This world has went, went beyond what was set up. Went beyond the laws that the commandments that was set up by the heavenly father. But you know, Esau is the devil anyway. He's not going to follow it. Okay, so. Uh, it's transgression. Let's see. Let's look at the word transgression. It says to sin. There you go. To sin. What is sin? Sin is transgression of the law. John, 1 John 3 and 4 says, Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. That means they went beyond the limits that the law allows you to. You, you, you did something that the law doesn't tell you to do. You know, it says, For sin is the transgression of the law. You did something you wasn't supposed to do. So you transgressed the law. You went over it. You went around it. You said, basically... Threw up the middle finger to the law, you know, if you will, just a figure of speech. Um, what was that precept? First John 3 and 4. It says, this is the BBE. It says, everyone who is a sinner goes against the law, for sin is going against the law. They're, they're put plain and basic. That is put in plain, basic Bible terms, man. Let's see what the NLT says. NLT says, everyone who sins is breaking God's law. For all sin is contrary to the law of the Most High. And that's what we see in Babylon the Great. The subject matter of this lesson is when it comes to women's apparel. What women wear. Which, this is, among, this is one among many things that go wrong with the society. One among many. You know, so uh, this is Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. It says, uh, the woman, the woman shall not wear, hold on, let me, bear with me one second. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1, 22, verse 5. It says, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So, you know, a man, wear, uh, a man if, if a man is wearing pants, then a woman should not be wearing pants, man. You know? It says, which in the old days, you know, Israel, we wore uh, garments, you know, down to our feet. But in this society, men wear pants. It says, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So a man, a, a man should be wearing, woman, a man should not be wearing women's clothes, and a woman, woman should not be wearing a man's clothes. It says, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto the man, a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do are an abomination unto Yahweh, thy power. So that's what one thing that you have going on in the uh, entertainment industry. They always making men, grown men, wear um, dresses. You know, you got a couple examples: Tyler Perry, uh, Eddie Murphy, uh, Martin Lawrence. They always put them in the movies where they had to cross dress. That's what they call it. They call it cross dressing um, and looking like a woman. That's an abomination to Yahweh by Shemuel Shah. A man don't supposed to be wearing that, man. You know, 
So this society promotes that. It, it allows it. But the Heavenly Father is against it. He says it's an abomination. Let's read the NLT. It says, it is not right for a woman to be dressed in man's clothing or for a man to put on a woman's robe whosoever does such things in um the, is disgusting to the lord your power so that's nothing but confusion the scripture says what the lord is not the author of confusion so the lord don't want women and men wearing the same fucking thing man no it's not right women wear, wear what women supposed to wear and we are dressed in modest apparel and men wear what men supposed to wear you know that's how it's supposed to be um so with that, man, Lord, well, this lesson was edifying quick, quick through the spirit. It's lucky about the inconvenience. I'm not sure why um, that my phone does that when somebody called me, even though I put it on Do Not Disturb. But um, Lord, willing, this lesson was edifying and quick through the spirit. Uh, we'll close out by giving all praise and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Rukah HaKodash, double honor to the Apostle, Elders, Great Millstone, Ruth, well. Shalom.